Hello everybody, my name is Catherine Trelan and I am the Quality Assurance Facilitator for the Newborn Blood Spot Screening Programme within the Belfast Trust. Um, the Public Health Agency employs me and um, I hope you enjoy this presentation and get some um, good learning from it. Um, so you have my contact name and number there and if you have any problems, um, don't be afraid to give me a ring. Um, the aims and objectives of this training programme are just to provide background information on the newborn blood spot in Northern Ireland, to provide information on the conditions that we screen for, to recognise the importance of obtaining informed consent and reflect on your own practice in helping parents make informed choices, to discuss the procedure for decline of newborn blood spot, to discuss the correct procedure for blood sampling technique, recognising the importance of accurate record keeping and discussing and reporting and following up of screening results. So the blood spot screening programme, the background is we've always for decades we have been screening babies for um, congenital and inherited metabolic diseases in childhood and we often would call the test the PKU test which suggests that we're only testing for phenylketonuria. However, we are testing for nine conditions in total, and they're listed here. Congenital hypothyroidism, sickle cell disorder, cystic fibrosis, phenylketonuria, MCAD, MSUD, IVA, gluteric acuderic type 1, and HCU. The six inherited metabolic tests are all tested as one, so a parent cannot therefore just say, Oh, I would like to be tested for phenylketonuria, but I don't want to be tested for maple syrup disease. If they are tested for one, they are tested for them all. So who is eligible for the screening? Well, all babies up to the age of one year, and one year is taken from day naught, defined as day naught of life, up to an inclusive of 365 days of age. They can be tested for cystic fibrosis only up until eight weeks of age. So if then in the initial um, in the initial time they decide, oh, a dope would not like to be tested for cystic fibrosis, if they arrive to the community midwife or the health visitor at nine weeks of age and say, I think I would like to be tested for that now, it's too late. It can only be tested up until eight weeks of age. And it includes babies who are born and resident in Northern Ireland and also those who have recently moved in to Northern Ireland. So we've all seen these little um, leaflets around the building and within our work spectrum, the newborn blood spot screening for your baby leaflet, which should be given to the parents in advance of the test. We would like it to be given at least 24 hours before you take the sample as it gives the parents a full detailed rundown of what we're testing for. If they agree to the test, then it should be written in the notes very clearly, newborn blood spot screening in performed with parental consent. And in the left hand corner of the screen, you can see uh, there is a QR code. That means that any leaflet that has that QR code from May 2022, will be able to translate that leaflet from English into 10 other languages, Arabic, Romanian, or just to name a few. So um, what are the parents actually consenting to? They're consenting to the sample being taken, that the sample will go to a lab to be tested, that they may be contacted by specialist clinical teams if a test is positive or inconclusive for conditions that results will be recorded on many health systems and registers, that residual blood spots will be stored for quality assurance of the programme, and that residual samples may be used for research. And those are kept for up to five years. So if parents do not wish to be contacted in relation to research, no research contact should be written on the card. So some parents decide to decline a newborn blood spot. Why? Parent declined blood spot screening for whatever name, all of the conditions or some of the conditions. And you should um, record in the notes why they have done that. And very clearly, they should be given um, information about what they're actually declining. Also, in order for them to decline a sample, you must fill in a newborn blood spot screening card, as you would do for if you were actually sending one. So one of the actual forms. 
if you fill that in with the patient's demographics, completely as if you were going to send it with a, a blood sample on it, and then right in the corner here that the parent has declined. This then goes to the lab. The lab sends that information to the child health system, and then um, it means that that baby does not appear on my fail safe system. Also, what should be done if the parent declines is the parent will be given a letter explaining to them why they why they have declined and also the same letter will be sent to the GP and health visitor informing them that the blood spot has been declined and that way if the baby turns up at a later date with um, symptoms um, the GP would know to double check for any of these diseases that were not already tested for. Avoidable repeats. So um, unfortunately, the, um, there are a certain number of babies that are tested in a year whose blood samples will not be accepted by the lab. This causes a delay to treatment in babies. It creates anxiety in parents and unnecessary distress to the babies. It costs the NHS £100 per repeat sample and it provides double the work for health professionals and lab staff. The avoidable repeat target is should be below 2% and the Belfast Trust are currently sitting between 3 and 5% and that was um, from October, December 2022. So here are some examples of avoidable repeats. So the top one with the tiny, tiny little dots speaks for itself. It is an insufficient sample and there is no way that the lab would be able to get enough blood from that to be able to test for any of the conditions. The second sample in the yellow envelope looks like the baby's blood has been dropped and then the blood has been dragged by the foot into that peculiar shape and that is the foot should never touch the card, only the blood should touch the card so that would be considered as contaminated and the lab will not test when it sees that sort of thing. And the third sample with the black line directly above it shows small dots and big dots. It's very inconsistent, so it's very hard for the lab to know how well the sample was taken. They will not test for that either. Another avoidable repeat sample is here on the left. Um, it says expiry date March 2022. Although it is a beautiful sample and would be acceptable in any other situation, it is not acceptable here because it is now out of date. So please remember to check your expiry date. And the sample beside it again is very erratic and doesn't have a single drop and actually looks like it has been overlayered. Overlayering is not allowed. Reasons for avoidable repeats, as I have already described with my um, blood spot samples, damp cards, multi-spotted, compressed, lost samples, incorrect details, no health and care number, missing date of birth, all those sorts of things. There's lots of things can um, contribute to an avoidable repeat. So we have six tips for heel pricks. Ensure the baby's feet are warm. A lot of people believe that this is nonsense. However, having been a community midwife myself for a long time, I do feel that if the feet are warm, it really will help. It also gives the parents something specific that they can do to help you to ensure the test goes well. Know your landmarks. So we do like you to use the edge of the foot rather than the plantar surface. Use gravity to help you out. Um, and the blood will hopefully drop onto the card. Take your time to let the heel refill and let the blood drop onto the card. Make sure the baby and parent and caregiver are also comfortable and get yourself help if you need it from another nurse or a midwife or a doctor. So what you need for this, you already know, you need your little card. You need your yellow envelope, although if you're sending it from the Belfast Trust, you can send it in the wax envelope directly in the shoot system without the yellow envelope around it. You need the personal child health record maternity notes. You need water for cleansing, non-sterile protective gloves, a lancet appropriate to age. So in the neonatal unit, if you have a really, really tiny, tiny newborn baby preterm, 
the purple lancet is probably your best bet. If you have a baby that is bigger, the green one is your next. And the community midwives use a different colour again because those babies are big, healthy term babies. So in the neonatal unit, you're probably talking about purple or green. Um, you obviously need a sharps box, cotton wool to clean it up, and a little plaster if the baby is very um, continues to bleed after the test is done. Um, if a baby is not bleeding, a second prick may be necessary and should be taken from a different part of the same foot or the other foot. The sample taker is the person responsible for completing the card, and currently the Belfast Trust are changing their supplier of lancets, and we are moving to the microdot. And these are microdot lancets. So here we have just a little example of what area of the foot you should be using. So you should be using the sides of the feet directly below the big toe or directly below the little toe at the back of the foot on the heel. Hence why sometimes we call it the heel prick test. If you are not successful in getting a good sample from the heel, it is feasible to use the plantar surface but really we would encourage you only to use the sides of the heel. It is not necessary to clean the heel, but if you do use water only, don't use alcohol wipes or gels. Allow the heel to air dry, wait for the blood to flow and a drop to form. Allow one spot to drop on each of the circles, filling each circle completely. Allow a single drop of blood to fill the circle by natural flow, ensuring that the blood seeps through. In other words, try not to squeeze, however, this sometimes harder than it seems, and apply the sample to the front of the card and not to the back. Believe me, the lab knows when you do that. Please, only to the front. The blood spot card, again, is just exactly what we've seen. Um, it costs about um, 50p per card and is made from pure filter paper. And um, it can be easily damaged, so please, please check your expiry date. So as I've already said, good quality blood spots are those where the circle is filled, where it is evenly saturated by a single drop of blood and the blood soaks through to the back of the blood spot card. So in the neonatal unit, you already use your little neonatal screening page. Please, please make use of this. This is a really good asset um, for you to have and it'll keep you right about when you should be taking your blood spot. If the baby has had any sort of blood transfusion, you must leave at least three clear days post-transfusion. And it clearly lays it out for you in this little section down here. So if your baby has had any sort of blood platelets or anything along blood lines, please put the date in, work out when your three clear days is and take it on the fourth day. Don't make any errors about that because that is an avoidable repeat. In the neonatal unit, I have three or four posters up on the ward um, called Ed Memoir, and it just reminds you again, more carefully, about the screening for transfusion samples, just to make sure you absolutely leave your clear days. In the neonatal unit, in some of the areas, there is also this huge big poster that says, once is enough, if you forget, the information that is included in this video then these are up on the walls throughout the neonatal unit. Um, we're coming to the end so um, all's well it ends well so whenever you're thinking about sending the sample check the expiry date on the card, check the health and care number, check the baby's date of birth and check the sample date. Check the details, check the details, check the details. Get a friend to check it for you and please do not rewrite your sample before you do it, or please do not write it for another professional. There's plenty of staff training and tools there, the EU Learning for Healthcare, and the Aid Memoir, the Once is Enough, and their CEC are also currently doing newborn blood spot training on their website. Um, there are letters coming out for follow-up, so if you have one missed newborn blood spot you will get a letter telling you that you've missed it and just to update yourself. If you have two in a row you will get 
um, a letter asking you to do a little bit of training and letter three will require a data X to be filled in and more sturdy action plans going into process. The trust contacts for anything newborn blood spot related is myself, Catherine Trelan, and my um, immediate boss is Gillian Morrow. And they are just at the normal Belfast Trust HSCNI addresses. The Regional Newborn Blood Spot Screening Lab is here actually on the Belfast um, Trust site here at the Royal. Um, the labs are very um, good and they will give tours if anybody fancies one at any point. You can either give them a ring and they'll fit you in or you can let me know. Thank you very much for your time and attention today. I hope you've learned something new and please be careful with your newborn blood spots. All the best.